This is the third time I've tried to do this voiceover and it still sounds really boring. So I'm just going to give up. Here's the equation. And if I write these uh, algebraic values underneath, remember that whole products minus reactants thing? Well, that works uh, for delta HF, for the change in heat of formation, that products minus reactants. You should also know that it works for delta G, the change in Gibbs free energy. So delta G of the products minus delta G of the reactants. And it might be STP. We might stick that little Saturn sign in there, if you will. I think it's a theta, not a Saturn. And S. Well, it isn't actually delta S. It's S that we'll give you for the reactants and the products. But for the equation, it is delta S, the change in entropy. So S is entropy. And delta S is the change in entropy. And it's that whole products minus reactants business again. So quite straightforward. Just keep an eye on the signs. Don't mess those up. Let's look at ye merry harbour process. So find delta S. Just going to put the numbers in, making sure I take account of the coefficients. And just do products minus reactants. Oh, that was clever. It gives me minus 199. If you forget what the units are, then they're probably in the question and they're definitely in the data booklet. For our final example, find S for hydrogen. So put the numbers in. 198, that's 2x, because I don't know what it is. That is in the data booklet. And my delta S is at the end there. I'll get a point even if I mess it up, if I put the equation, probably. And I'm just going to solve for x. So I've tried to make my answer clear. That's S theta for hydrogen is 130.5 joules per Kelvin per mole. Here's a top tip for you. Notice that S and delta S has joules in the units. And yet the data booklet gives uh, delta H and delta G with kilojoules in their units. So you have to account for that. You have to divide delta S by 1,000 to turn the joules there into kilojoules.